Hey, no doubt about it. Oakland A's fans rock. You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You're going to cause some trouble today, aren't you? I can I can just tell by the look in your eye. How you doing? It's Wayne Coy back with another episode of Locked on A's, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And, of course, we want to thank you for being one of those first listen people. If you make us your first listen every day, it does the heart proud. And not only that, it's just, uh, it's just good to know that you're there. So thank you for that and for being on board. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm exhausted. This has just been a crazy couple of weeks for anybody trying to cover this team and everything that's going on off the field. It's not even the normal baseball stuff that we usually deal with at this time of year. No, it's been, it's been a lot of, well, you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Okay. But let's uh, go back to yesterday, of course, and the fallout uh, from what do you call it? Do you call it a pep rally, a press conference, a, a council meeting? I guess it was all of those things, right? Everybody showed up and showed out and wearing those green shirts, the ones that say stay, because that was really the message I think that Oakland was trying to deliver. And boy, did they. A unanimous vote by the city council, eight to nothing, to adopt a resolution that basically says, look, we are the home of the Oakland A's. We have been and we will continue to be the home of the Oakland A's. So that's put out there, and I think it's put out there for a reason. What's that reason? Well, I'm going to tell you. Also, I need to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Our buddies at FanDuel, they're all about the NFL right now, and it's a pretty cool time to get on board. Yeah, they got a great deal for you. In fact, you can win 150 bucks with a $5 bet on FanDuel. I'm going to tell you how you can do that in just a little bit with an app that's easy to use and a chance for you to win $150 in bonus bets with FanDuel. I couldn't make it up. It's for real. Okay, I'll tell you about it in just a minute. But yeah, back to what was going on uh, at City Hall yesterday. Started off being a press conference, Mayor Mayor Tao kind of throwing down the wood a little bit. She was followed by Rebecca Kaplan, who also uh, has been very involved from Get. To just say, hey, look, you know what? We've done a lot. And I think that was, again, maybe the objective was to be able to say, look, history lesson here. Let's show you just exactly all of the stuff that we've been asked to do by the A's, that we've done for the A's, the money that they've gone out. And I mean, they've, they've been able to uh, get together and bring in more than $400 million in public funds just to be able to help the A's with infrastructure at the Howard Terminal site. And, of course, that's something that they're not even talking about right now. Will they ever? I don't know. We've got a big uh, relocation vote coming up, of course, next week, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But, uh, yeah, 8-Zip. Did I mention that the A's fans rock? Well, if I didn't, I need to because it was a full room. And you don't see that too often. City council meetings can be kind of sleepy affairs, but no way yesterday. It was uh, loud and proud, and uh, thanks to everybody who showed up and showed that spirit. Now, schools over stadiums, you've heard about them, and you probably also heard that it was a little bit of a swing and a miss, but we're going to call it a setback, and that's really all it is because, well, it's not over. They got sued by two lobbyists, uh, one of which in particular has very close ties to the Oakland A's, uh, the other with ties to the Las Vegas Review Journal, and of course, the stadium authority, surprise, surprise. But anyway, uh, they were successful in being able to get a judge to say, hey, you know what, based on the letter of the law and the way that the laws are written to be able to get a referendum on a ballot, you have to follow these rules, A, B, and C. And apparently they didn't uh, bring everything to the table that they needed to in terms of detail. It was their contention that that made the whole process very hard to understand. And I think in their words, confusing. And the judge agreed. Even though he did state, he goes, I would always pick schools over stadiums myself. However, I thought it was pretty cool that he did that. But again, setback's the word you want to use because this isn't, uh, this isn't over. In fact, all it is is an opportunity, I think, for schools over stadiums to regroup, 
and to make sure that they've got all their I's dotted and their T's crossed before they either file another petition or appeal this decision to uh, the higher Supreme Court. Now, I don't know which they're going to do. I don't even think they've announced that yet, or certainly not publicly they have it. So we'll be watching that to see what they do. But here's the thing. They hadn't gotten any, hadn't gotten, they, yeah, they had yet to uh, secure any of the signatures for the ballot. So the whole idea of getting thousands of signatures that end up getting thrown out, which then would make their work that they'd done uh, for nothing, that didn't happen because they hadn't gone out and actually got the signatures together yet. They were waiting because they wanted to see what was going to happen after the lawsuit was filed. And it's probably a good thing that they waited. Now, listen, they've got till July to be able to get uh, just over 100,000. I think it's like 102,000 plus signatures that they've got to get. And they have to get those from all four congressional districts in the state of Nevada. That could be a little bit of tough sledding just because some of the areas are less populated. But time is on their side. To quote the Rolling Stones, they've got all the way till July to do that. And of course, they can continue to petition for the referendum you know, for a month or two and each time, I guess, get sued and each time have to go to court. And it probably will only take one more time because, listen, they just told you everything you did wrong, right? <laughs> so you, you figure out, well, okay, let's just not repeat that. So we'll see where it all goes. We Again, we don't know which of the paths they're going to take. We do know that we're going to hopefully have them on uh, very soon. We've actually reached out to them to see if we can get them on this week before the week's over. Kind of curious to see where their heads are, right? I think I kind of know those schools over stadiums, of course, won't be losing those signatures. So that's a big, big thing. They have the ability to start that process once they get the green light uh, from the state that they're going to be able to, in fact, have an accepted pe petition uh, to get on the uh, on the ballot with the referendum. That ballot, by the way, would be November of 2024. It'll be interesting to see if the team continues to do everything that it seems like they will do in their power to be able to stop this, which, again, has to give you pause. Because if it's really as an insignificant thing as they would lead you to believe, well, then why the lawsuit? Why are you concerned about it getting on the ballot if you're not concerned about it getting on the ballot? Which I really do believe, and I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think that is the biggest threat right now to the A's because, of course, they would be looking to have at least some, if not all, of that $380 million in public funds that have been allotted to them for the new stadium over there, Tropicana and Las Vegas Boulevard, to, uh, to go away, to not be able to use that money, which then means John Fisher is going to have to find another way to come up with that money because, of course, that was a big step towards what they were going to be getting for their stadium. And then they were prepared, they say, to be able to spend the Delta to get the thing built, which was what, uh, I think a billion and a half last we checked. Good luck with that, by the way. So uh, investor call today, MGM Resorts and their CEO, Bill Hornbuckle, made a statement that I guess we didn't expect, but it the same time, if you're following the playbook, you probably did expect it because what happened yesterday, right? The A's fans, center stage, the whole stay in Oakland thing was certainly the message that got delivered. It's what everybody was hearing. And you can almost bank on whenever that happens, there's going to be some turn of events involving John Fisher and usually the Review Journal that kind of spin everything in a different direction. It's just kind of how they do it. It's their modus operandi. Today was no exception. So today, Bill Hornbuckle, CEO of MGM Resorts International, uh, said on their call, because they have an investor call today, um, that he was presented with a new rendering of the Las Vegas Stadium, that he's seen it. And uh, his words, I'll give you his exact quote in just a minute, uh, but he met with John Fisher, who was in town uh, to do some MLB business. Business. Okay. So, yeah, he said, uh, Hornbuckle said that he saw the new rendering, his word was mock-up of the stadium. Quote, I was literally with their team and their owner yesterday. So that would have been, today's Wednesday, so that would have been Tuesday. 
uh, he said, they are excited to be coming. They actually showed me the design, which was spectacular, I might add. So we're all excited about that, end quote. And again, that's from MGM's CEO, uh, who also said uh, that there's something about uh, refacing MGM Grand, which faces, of course, across the street toward that Tropicana site, although there would be a Tropicana, a new Tropicana tower uh, where the current one is. The stadium would actually be behind that, on those nine acres behind there, uh, behind the casino and the new uh, the new hotel. But he did say something about refacing it uh, so that the design uh, might be able to play into the stadium concept a little bit better, and and something about um, the future of that particular corner looking a little different. Well, certainly it would if there was a stadium there. So all of that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's playing out per script. It's kind of what you expect. Predicted it would happen actually last week. I told you. I said, you watch. As soon as the thing happens at city council, and I was also wondering about that vote on Monday, which went the opposite way that I thought it might go. But then, you, you know, you just make room for the hype men. And in this case, the most recent would be Hornbuckle from MGM, who's obviously got more in common with John Fisher than he does with you and I. But uh, uh, that news is designed to start a media buzz. Okay, so let's get them talking. By the way, hello, uh, we're talking, right? Can't help it. There's no way around it. So that's what happens. The buzz starts to start. We, we start talking about, uh, the buzz starts to begin, rather. We start talking about the new stadium or the potential of a new stadium and what does all that mean. And then the Hyper Bowl, and then the actual renderings, those are coming guaranteed. And, of course, the vote could be as early as next Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. And we did find out today that there's another deadline with the people who own the property in terms of them being able to deal with their employees and what time you know, of the month they're going to get out or what time of year they're going to get out and when and all of that. December 1st was their drop-dead deadline to be able to do that. Thanks to Casey Pratt, by the way, for that lead. So, um, with the owners' meeting starting in Arizona, and that'll be next week, of course, all of the attention is going to be on that. And if you've got the buzz, even though the other owners haven't really had time yet to ask any questions, which I think is a fair question for me to ask, it's what are you actually basing your opinion on other than what other, other pre-prejudice you have? You had the mayor of Oakland yesterday saying she's heard from nobody. I thought there was a relocation committee. I thought there were three people in charge. I thought the commissioner was involved. Wouldn't they reach out to Oakland to get the Oakland picture before they decide what to do with the Las Vegas picture, which at this point there isn't really a picture to look at. There'll be some. And with about that much window, so you don't really have time to think about it, that's the play. It was the play in front of the legislators in Nevada. It is going to be the play again in front of the owners and let's see if they uh, if they take the bait, just like Nevada's legislators did. We'll have to wait and see. But we need construction plans, architectural plans. We need a pro forma. We need a financial plan. We need to know who your architect is. Apparently, they've chosen one if they've got pictures that they're showing to the CEO of MGM. And, of course, you have to figure out where you're going to play after the Coliseum lease uh, ends, which it's going to after next season. So that's a whole lot of questions going into a – a meeting with the Major League Baseball owners where you're expecting them to make a decision uh, next week, and if not next week, certainly before the 1st of December, uh, which apparently is a deadline with GLI. All right, so all of that's happening. See what I'm saying? That's why I'm tired. I'm not I'm not by any means uh, ready to stop talking about any of this, but I'm, uh, I'm a little seepy, okay? So what am I going to do? I'm going to grab my app. And I'm going to have some fun with FanDuel. we got football coming again, of course. Uh, tomorrow night there'll be a football game. And then after that there'll be a Sunday uh, affairs and then Monday night football. It's fun to get involved with all of it. Whoever you're rooting for, you know what? It's easy to download the app. It's easy to use the app. And boy, is it easy to spend $5 on a bet. And if you win that bet, we're just talking about a money line bet here. Straight up, who's going to win the game? You do that and you win a $5 bet you get $150 in bonus bets 
all part of the football celebration that's going on right now with our friends at FanDuel. You want to do it? I know you do. So get to FanDuel.com slash Locked on, and you're going to find all the details there. And of course, you're going to be able to get the app. Then you can do whatever you want. You can bet the spreads and the player props and the overs and the unders and all of that. Just makes uh, watching football a heck of a lot more fun. FanDuel.com slash locked on and enjoy this NFL season. It's underway. FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. Okay. Uh, besides all this stuff that's going on in court and everything else, there's plenty there. Uh, we, we had a chance to talk about some things we really like, like things we believe in, you know, stuff that we're very much about. And we certainly believe in Stephen Vogt, right? Yeah, of course we do. And we're so happy for Stephen because, of course, in case you missed the news, he was named to be the new manager for the Cleveland Guardians. And the managerial wheel just keeps rolling. Craig Council with the mind blow of all mind blows Everybody thought he was going to the Mets. I mean, everybody. And he ended up uh, becoming the Cubs' new manager. So, of course, you know, one person leaves, another opening. And, well, uh, we are proud to announce that another person who's got big ties to the A's has accepted a position, and that would be our former third base coach and infield coach and instructor, Ron Washington. Yep, Wash is the new manager of American League West Rivals, the L.A. Angels. I always want to call them the California Angels because I'm old school. But, yes, the Los Angeles Angels who have uh, announced that Wash will be their manager. And I'm going to tell you right away, that's a, that's a player favorite. The team's going to love this guy. Fans are going to love him, too. He's very fun to watch. And, uh, he's you know, it's as far as I'm concerned, a good fit because he's a baseball guy. You got Shohei who's thinking about leaving, more than likely going to leave. But he might have a little bit of pause if he thinks, well, wait a minute. We've got good manager in place. Mike Trout's still here. I'm still here. It's a thought, right? I, I mean, I doubt it. I think at this point people are thinking Dodgers or Giants or Yankees, right? Well, we'll have to see. All I know is Wash is there, and he's a, he's a guy who's fun to, to just see do his job. He's easy to like. Tell him, Wash. Tell him how easy it is. My favorite scene in Moneyball, favorite, bar none, the Scott Hatterberg living room. It's incredibly difficult. Okay. Anyway, Washington, new skipper in Anaheim for the Angels. Meanwhile, the A's manager, Mark Kotze, I guess knows where he's going, even though he was rumored to be in the mix for the Mets job. Uh, the A's said, well, that'll be enough of that. David Forrest coming out to say uh, that he couldn't be happier with the work that Mark Kotze's done and that he's kind of the face of the franchise now, which is true for a bunch of young players to have a guy who's kind of walked in their shoes. Right? Not kind of, he has. I mean, Mark Kotze certainly wore a few uniforms in his day, including ours, and he's proven to be very good with those young players. Now, I know they've lost 100 games two years in a row, but honestly, it really is about the cards that you've been dealt. And I think that's probably why there was, I'm sure, thought about leaving, and when he knew about the Mets opening, uh, you know, he, I think he was serious about, you know, checking that out. And I think the A's were cool enough to give him permission should uh, the interview present itself. But enough is enough. They have decided to exercise their option for 2025. So third year of his three-year deal will be this coming season. And then you're going to add another year to that for Mark Kotze managing the Oakland A's. And that definitely takes his name out of the rumor mill at least for now. Also yesterday, 25 players within the A's organization that are uh, minor league players decided to elect for free agency. And some names that you certainly know, uh, let's start with uh, James Caprellian. In fact, there was a quite, a, quite a lot of pitching. I think this puts a little bit of uh, emphasis on needing to develop pitchers for the A's because you had Caprellian, uh, also left-handed pitcher Sam Long, right-handed relief pitcher Chad Smith, Left-handed pitcher Kirby Sneed, injury issues there. Uh, Right-handed pitcher Dalton Jeffries. See what I'm saying? Left-handed relief pitcher Richard Lovelady. Maybe one of the greatest names in baseball history, right? So all going to be free agents along with Austin Beck, outfielder, who had some promise, and first, base, uh, first baseman Greg Diekman as well. 
so all of them have elected free agency. Now we'll have to see if any of them kind of swing back our way. But I think maybe more than expected, those names when they hit the, hit the uh, wire yesterday. And, of course, they'll be hitting the market now. So we'll be watching to see what happens with them. How about this? A's outfielder and 2023 All-Star Brent Rooker has been nominated for the 2023 All-MLB team. Now, if you want to get a vote in for our guy Rooker, well, all you got to do is go to MLB.com, and you'll find the ballot there. You get to vote for one person at each of the positions, and you can do that. Now, 50% of the vote total will come from the fans. The other 50% comes from an MLB media panel, kind of like they've done with the All-Star game in the past. So you can still be a part of it. You got a voice. You might as well use it. Pretty proud of Brent Rooker on a great season for him in 2023. Now, with the relocation vote looming, here it comes next week, probably, more than likely. I think it's only fitting that today, in a story, we talk about that very thing, relocation. I mean, I'm sure you know, the A's started in Philadelphia. They moved to Kansas City, and from Kansas City came to Oakland, where they've, of course, been for 55 years. Well, it was November 8th, this date, 1954, that the American League owners said yes to the approved move or to the potential move of the Philadelphia Athletics who had asked to be able to relocate to Kansas City. Final vote was 6-2 to two in favor of the move, and that's where they headed. They went to Municipal Stadium, which when they got there was only 17,000 seats, eventually expanded to 36,000 because they needed to. Of course, Major League Baseball, it's different. Been used as a minor league park and also Negro League Park prior to that. Then it was on this date in A3 back in 2004 that shortstop Bobby Crosby was named the almost unanimous American League Rookie of the Year. 27 out of 28 first place votes for Bobby as he wins that award. And a kind of a long line of Oakland A's Rookies of the Year. We had plenty, right? McGuire and Canseco and Walt Weiss and now Bobby Crosby. Uh, Bobby, by the way, headed back to Oakland. He's going to be part, an integral part, I think, of Mark Kotze's coaching staff this coming season. And he certainly earned the right to do that. Three seasons. He's been in Midland for four. Uh, the A's double-A team there, the Midland Rockhounds. And he's been their manager for the last three. So welcome home, Bobby. It's going to be good to see you in green and gold again. And it's certainly good to see you here. If you're an everydayer, thank you for that. If this is uh, your first time, we want to know that too. Anything really that's on your mind, go ahead and pop in in our comment section on YouTube. Get us on Twitter. Our handle there is at Locked On A's. And thanks again for making us your first listen every day. We certainly appreciate that. And we'll be back here tomorrow. It's going to be a good show. There's a new documentary coming out. It's called Summer of Cell. And it's all about... What do you think? The Oakland A's in the 2023 season and everything that we've been through and the reverse boycott and all of that. And it's all been documented. And these guys are very good documentarians. Is that the word? Documentary makers. I'll, I'll go with that. Uh, including the Reggie doc that's on Amazon right now, but Reggie Jackson's very good. Anyway, the two uh, people that are in charge of that documentary, the co-directors will be here on the podcast tomorrow. And we're absolutely looking forward to that conversation because I know that you're going to be covering the owners' meetings. And uh, they were there yesterday for the city council meeting. And then they're going to start going into production and get this thing out there and get the ground swell going. Because I think, well, I don't think, I know. They're both A's fans for a long time. So you'll meet them tomorrow. We're looking forward to that show and hopefully having you back here too. Give us a thumbs up if you can. Please subscribe to the channel. That way you know when we're back here again. And we mean it. We appreciate every bit of that. Thanks for the support. We'll see you tomorrow or the next time, whenever that might be. Until then, I'm Wayne Coy. You keep on swinging.